Hello there you guys, welcome to enough of my videos. Is Cristiano Ronaldo enough? Cristiano Ronaldo has come out and said that I'm so happy to be back home after 12 years. Ronaldo's made it clear to Solskjaer that he's returned to the club to win trophies. Ronaldo also sent an emotional message to our fans. Ronaldo officially signed for Manchester United yesterday. It got announced last Friday that Manchester United reached an agreement with Juventus to re-sign Ronaldo. Cristiano Ronaldo signed a two-year contract. There's an option of a third year. He will receive £480,000 a week, so he's the highest earner at Old Trafford. Ronaldo completed his medical on Monday. Manchester United agreed a fee of €15 million Euros with a further €8 million Euros in add-ons. So that's €23 million Euros in total. That equates to £19.7 million in pounds sterling. Ronaldo was the last signing we made in the summer transfer window. I can assure Ronaldo's going to do very well in his second spell at Man United. Ronaldo could play for Man United until he's almost 40. I think Ronaldo is getting the number 7 shirt. I'm expecting Ronaldo to make his debut against Newcastle after the international break. After the 1-0 win against Wolves, Solskjaer confirmed that Cristiano Ronaldo will play as a centre forward. In Solskjaer's press conference prior to the game against Wolves, he made a public plea for Cristiano Ronaldo to rejoin Man United. And then somehow it just all came out. Last week, Ronaldo left Juventus training after like 40 minutes and he did make it clear to Juventus that he wanted to leave. But I'm surprised we've got him and I think a lot of United fans are surprised that he's come back because Man City were the favourites to sign him and Man City held talks with Ronaldo's agent, George Mendes. But Man City ended up pulling out of the race. The reason City went in for Ronaldo is because they couldn't get Kane because Kane is staying at Tottenham. Ronaldo is the greatest player of all time. He's won 32 major trophies in his playing career, including five Ballon d'Ors. In Ronaldo's first spell at Man United, he scored 118 goals in 292 games in all competitions. And he won three Premier Leagues, the Champions League, the FA Cup, two League Cups and the FIFA Club World Cup. He enjoyed six years in his first spell at Man United. As you all know, the summer transfer window closed yesterday night at 11 o'clock. And Man United 
enjoyed a good summer transfer window. We made four signings. We brought Tom Eaton in on a free, brought Sancho in, brought Varane in and re-signed Ronaldo. And we spent around £140 million. The only disappointing thing is that we didn't get a midfielder. And I think there's some players that are at Man United that we should have offloaded in the summer transfer window. We should have, should have offloaded Diego Dalot. We should have offloaded Jesse Lingard. We should have offloaded Anthony Martial. And we should have offloaded Donny van der Beek. And maybe a few others as well. Solskjaer did mention quite a few times during the summer transfer window that he was very pleased with our summer transfer business. You know, Solskjaer did receive the backing he deserved. Solskjaer has now enjoyed five transfer windows as permanent Manchester United manager. Uh, we did loan quite a few players out in the summer transfer window. Like I said, we loaned Brandon Williams out to Norwich. We loaned Andres Pereira out to Flamengo. We loaned Ethan Laird out to Swansea. We loaned Axel Tuanzebe out to Aston Villa. We loaned Facundo Polistri out and we loaned... To heave Chong out to Birmingham. I'm expecting Manchester United to offload players in January. I'm also expecting us to offload more players next summer. We only sold one player in the summer transfer window, and that was Daniel James. He went to Leeds now on my last video I gave you the news on Paul Pogba Paul Pogba is ready to sign a new contract at Manchester United I think the arrival of Cristiano Ronaldo will persuade Pogba to stay. Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer. The other week, Solskjaer did say that talks were ongoing with Pogba's representatives to persuade Pogba to sign a new Man United contract and he did mention that he was not worried about Pogba's contract situation. Before the start of the season, though, Pogba rejected a new contract at Man United and Sky Sports came out and said that he was increasingly unlikely to sign a new Man United contract. Sky Sports News said, though, before the start of the season that Pogba sees a long-term future at Man United but may wait on the contract extension. Before the start of the season, Solskjaer revealed that he had positive talks with Pogba over his future. Sky Sports News said earlier on this season that Pogba is very likely to leave Man United on a free next summer when his contract expires and it said that he's set to join PSG on a three because PSG are pushing to sign Pogba next summer. PSG... are prepared to offer Pogba £510,000 a week in wages to prize him away from Man United. Well, Marcia said not so long ago that Pogba told his agent that he wants to play for Real Madrid. He won't extend his contract with Man United. And he'll leave for free in 2022. Paul Pogba has five assists so far this season. He got four assists against Leeds and one assist against Southampton. 
Pogba produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season, but at one point last season, he was out with an ankle injury, or should I say a thigh injury, and he's had some ankle injuries at Man United. So far this season, we have registered seven points from our first three league games. So we've won two and we've drawn one. We are third in the Premier League. Like I said, this season is absolutely massive for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and I think he is aware of that because he has got big expectations to exceed. I hope Solskjaer can win a trophy this season. He has to win a trophy this season to basically save his job. He's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017. That's nowhere near good enough to our standards. Solskjaer's ambition for this season is to win the Premier League. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013. Which is eight years ago now. This is Solskjaer's third full season as Man United manager. Solskjaer has managed over 150 games as Man United manager in all competitions. He's managed 100 games in the Premier League. That game against Wolves last weekend was his 100th Premier League game. Solskjaer has been in charge of Manchester United now for almost three years. And reflecting now on his being at the football club, he has gained some managerial experience and he's learned quite a bit on the job. Before he was with us, he was at Mould. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mould. He enjoyed two spells at Mould. And before Mould, he was at Cardiff and his record at Cardiff was disastrous. So Oli hasn't got a proven pedigree as a manager, but that doesn't mean to say he can't succeed as Manchester United manager. But whatever happens regarding Solskjaer, will always adore him because at the end of the day, he is a club legend. He enjoyed 11 years as a Manchester United player and he flourished under Sir Alex Ferguson's guidance. I certainly think we made a mistake giving Solskjaer that new three-year contract before the start of the season because I can assure he won't see out this new contract. My perceptions have not changed on Ole despite us enduring a good summer transfer window. But like I've said to you so many times before, when we have been inconsistent and when we are inconsistent, not all the blame stems from the manager. He's accountable for certain things. But there's obviously still certain players at Man United that are not good enough to represent the club. And I hate the way the football club has been run for a long time. Like I've said to you before, the Glazers... They've been one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. The main reason is because the Glazers have put Man United in so much debt. The Glazers have been at Man United for 16 years. They purchased the club for £500 million back in 2005. But to be fair, the Glazers backed Solskjaer in the summer transfer window. That's only because they've been persuaded to because... Obviously, towards the end of last season, the Glazers were planning to scrap the Champions League for that European Super League. And reflecting on that, a lot of United fans protested against the Glazers at Carrington. Then, obviously, after they protested against the Glazers outside Old Trafford. But Solskjaer did reveal that the Glazers apologised. And like I said, Woodward, he's been one of the biggest issues at the club for a long time. Because, obviously, he was accountable for how poor our recruitment was for so long. 
and obviously we've overpaid for players in recent years. Uh, despite Woodward being one of the biggest issues of the club for a long time, though, to be fair to him, he stood by Solskjaer and he said several times before that he'd back Solskjaer. It got announced Woodward was leaving Man United when that European Super League came into the equation. Woodward's had a 16-year association with the club. So there you go. Man United certainly made the right decision getting a director of football in because I did mention that's one of the structural changes that we needed at the club. Darren Fletcher's part of the club as well and so too is Matt Judge. I've told you, Solskjaer has to improve his decision making this season because analysing the vast majority of his games at Man United is being tactically naive. But since Oli has come in, he's made good signings as Man United manager. Solskjaer has signed 14 players in total and he's spent around £441 million. So in the summer of 2019, he brought Daniel James and Juan Pesaka and Harry Maguire in. In January 2020, he brought Bruno Fernandes in and Odina Gala in on loan. Let Gallo go in January. In the summer of 2020, he brought Edison Cavani in, Donny van der Beek, Alex Tellez, Ahmad Diallo and Facundo Pellistri. We let Pellistri go out on loan. In the summer of 2020, we got four of those players on deadline day. And in the summer transfer window of this year, Oli brought Tommy in, in Jaden Sancho, Rafael Varane, and obviously brought Ronaldo back in. You know, Oli's also got rid of a lot of players since he's come in, which he knew he had to do. Uh, the players he's got rid of permanently, so he's obviously got rid of Daniel James. Uh, he released Sergio Romero, he released Joe Pereira. Got rid of Ashley Young, Valencia, Smalling, Damian, Herrera, Fellaini, Angel Gomez, Sanchez, Lukaku, Timothy Fossamensa, and Marcus Rojo. So I think all, they're all the players, or most of the players he's got rid of permanently. Also loaned quite a few players out. Obviously some of the players that did get loaned out have now returned, if some have gone back out on loan you can see that progress has been made under Oli you know because Oli's got us to like semi-finals got us to three semi-finals in his first full season got us to the EFL Cup semi-final last season which was his second full season um, also got us to the Europa League final last season. That Europa League final was Solskjaer's first major final as Man United manager and got us to the FA Cup quarter final. So there you go. So for Solskjaer now to prove himself, like I've said, he has to win a trophy. Last season Solskjaer got us a second place finish, but Solskjaer did accept that last season wasn't a successful season. And in Solskjaer's first full season he got us a third place finish. By the way, we are unbeaten in our last 28 Premier League away games, reflecting on that 1-0 win against Wolves last weekend. We haven't lost away from home in the Premier League since January 2020. Uh, Solskjaer has got a lot of trustworthy in his young players, which is a positive. And Solskjaer has more or less given everybody their chances to express themselves, including the young players like he sure they would do when he got appointed in as Man United manager. So they are the positives. And Solskjaer is our best manager since Ferguson. Despite me criticising him a lot during his managerial tenure at Man United. In a way I'm surprised he's still at Man United. Because we've endured very bad periods under Oli. Where he's been extremely close to getting sacked. We appointed Solskjaer in, in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. He's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. 
Ollie is our fourth permanent manager since Ferguson. Obviously, three managers have been sat since Ferguson. We sat David Moyes after 10 months. We finished seventh under the Moyes era. That's the lowest we finished in the Premier League era. We sat Louis van Gaal after two years, despite him winning the FA Cup. And we sat Jose Mourinho after two and a half years, despite him winning the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield in his first season. Mourinho also got a second place finish in his first season. So you can say Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United. Uh, we have spent over £1 billion now in the last eight years or so. And we must have brought a good 42, 43 players in. And like I've said, you know, Solskjaer is inheriting players who other managers brought in. Obviously, there's, there's Matt Aria from the Moyes era still. I'm expecting Matt to leave next summer when his contract expires. Uh, there's still some players here from the Van Gaal era. A lot of the players that Van Gaal brought in are no longer here now, though. And Jose Mourinho, you know, he recommended like 11 players into the club. Uh, some players have left who Mourinho brought in, but there's still quite a lot here who Mourinho brought in. So yeah, so anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Take care.